I am about to document how I set up the Blackmagic A10 Mini with the software control panel to do extra things like graphics and text overlay and live green screen chroma key. Welcome to the third part of my A10 Mini setup documentation or review. In the first part, I demonstrated how I set up a live projection system using two cameras, camera one and camera two, the big one over there, and plus an input from a computer display. And that goes, yep, you hear the sound from the computer, and that goes all the way to that external monitor. In the second video, I expanded the system further to include one more mirrorless camera and live stream direct to YouTube in 1080p. Check out the links below to watch the two videos where I documented in detail how I set up the hardware of the A10 Mini because in this video, I'm going to expand the system even further this time using the software control panel to add more features to my A10 Mini. Features like green screen, chroma key, text overlay, more transition effects, and other broadcast features. Before I start demonstrating the software control panel, you may like to know that this recording itself, this multi-cam recording, is actually going through the A10 Mini itself and via the USB-C port, which goes into the MacBook Pro, and in turn, it's being recorded using QuickTime. In order for the software to control the A10 Mini, all we need to do is to connect the USB-C port to the computer. The USB-C port is labeled as Webcam Out. That means the USB-C does two things. It lets the video from the A10 Mini go into the computer, and from the computer, this control signal goes into the A10 Mini. From here on, you will see part of the recordings from this camera, as well as screen recordings. So let's dive into the software now. Okay, the software is called A10 Software Control Panel. Let's activate it. I have my software control panel already activated. Let me rearrange the screen so that we can see both the program output and the software control panel. Once I activate the software control panel, I don't have to touch the hardware buttons anymore. Watch, when I switch camera on the software, the hardware buttons automatically switches. The first thing that we notice very similar to the hardware panel is the four input switches. They label it Program, Cam1, Cam2, Cam3, and Cam4. There are some buttons that are grayed out. It's because the ATEM software control panel is designed for various other ATEM switches. And the ATEM mini is the smallest among all the switches available. Now the next thing to notice are the three tabs below the control panel. Right now, we are in the Switcher tab. Next to the Switcher, we have Media tab. You can see blank spaces here. This is where we, we choose our media or the graphic to be overlaid into our main video. Okay, right now, they are all empty. And then next to the Media tab is the Audio tab. This is where we control our audio. Look at that. Okay, right now my mic is connected to mic 1. So for now, let's go back to switcher tab. Next, I would like to demonstrate how you control the transition effect. As you follow my cursor, you can see there's a section called transition style. Right now, it's, it's mixed. You have to first decide which input to transition to and you go to the preview section and select the input. Okay, right now I select camera one. And then you press auto. 
So it will slowly mix into camera one. So I can change to a dip and press auto. And we'll go back to camera four. And the other one is wipe, auto. Yep, you see a special white transition, which is not available on the hardware. Where did I get that transition? If you look on the right hand side under the palettes tab, you will see transitions. Okay, so previously when I tested this software, I've selected the diamond transition. If you notice, whenever I press auto to do the transition effect, this lever starts to move. So you can even move this lever manually yourself. Up, down, or just put it anywhere, stop anywhere you like. So when it comes to transition effects, the controls are a little bit different from the hardware buttons. So now let's move on and talk about graphic overlay. First we go into the media tab and then on the left hand side you'll see local library. When I installed the ATEM software control, there were a few graphics that came with it and they put it under example graphics folder. Maybe we click on news templates. Why don't I play with uh, the lower thirds? All right, that's what we use most often. Okay, what we do is if, if we like this, we simply drag it into the first empty thumbnail. Okay, then it will appear here as number one still. Under the media pool selection, we can only select still images. We can't overlay animated videos. So right now, I have a lower third which I want to put onto my video. Go back to the switcher control panel. Go to the right hand panel. Beside palettes tab, go to media player tab. And you notice under media player, there is a media selection. Remember, we put a graphic under still number one. Click on still number one, which is already selected. And then go back to palettes, go to downstream key, and ensure that media player one is selected. And go to this section here called DSK1 or downstream key one and select on air. There you go. The president enjoys break. Okay, of course, you can use Photoshop to change all that. Okay, when you want to turn that off, you just Click on on air again under the DSK1 section. Okay, so that's graphic overlay or text overlay if you prefer. You have to prepare your text on a graphic. Okay, so now I'm done with graphic overlay. Let's turn it off. Collapse our downstream key control. And let's do green screen. To activate the green screen effect or chroma key, go to the right hand side under the palettes tab, go to open up upstream key control panel. Now you'll see under upstream key there are four tabs Luma, Chroma, Pattern, DVE. What we want is Chroma. Okay, then the first setting is Fill Source. Fill Source is the scene with the green background. Okay, this is the one. We are looking at and this is under camera tree at the moment so i'm going to change fuel source to camera tree so the next setting will be chroma sample okay this is very interesting when i click on the green patch here what i can do is move that little square around here okay, i can increase the size of the square move the square around look at the screen up here the color changes according to what's on the scene so if I move it to my face, you'll notice the color here is brown. So I want a background. So I make sure I move that square to the position where my green is. So that's the green I want to remove. The next thing is what you want to show behind the green. When you remove the green, you're going to show something, which I'm going to select number four. Number four is my, it's my computer. Computer screen is showing a website right now. And then next, all I have to do is... Under the next transition section, click on On Air. There you go. I'm on air now with a green screen background. Happy with it? 
Okay, I know you're not happy because my green screen is just so small. I'm going to crop away the walls. All I have to do is go to the right hand control panel again and just scroll down. What I want to do is mask. So, this is green screen. There is a lot more the software control panel can do with the Blackmagic A10 Mini, but the live green screen chroma key feature is enough for me. What do you think? Leave your comments and questions below. In the meantime, click the like button, share this video, and if you haven't done so, subscribe! This is Adrian Lee from Videolane.com. See you in the next one.